I got asked a question on a recent live stream on this channel. A question that I wasn't expecting to receive. And the question was poised as a which is better scenario. So I expected two directly competing products to be placed before me. However, what was proposed to me were two services that I never classed as competing products. So I'd never thought about comparing them, let alone which was better than the other. I did give an answer on that stream, but the question stuck with me for a few weeks afterwards, and I want to visit it in more depth today, as I feel that it could be of use to you guys. Welcome everybody, my name is Doragon, and that question was quite simple. Which is better? Cloud gaming or remote play? I had some initial musings. Like I said in the intro, they're not really competing products, these two. Or at least, that's what I initially thought. When you think about it in more depth, however, am I underselling both sides of the question? Both offer you access to a gaming library wherever you are. Both have provisos on how that is achieved, and both have compatibility and availability challenges. The more I have thought about it, the closer together cloud gaming and remote play actually seem. When you then add in the increased cost of living globally in 2022, and that many people are cutting costs where they can, both of these options are suddenly going head to head to offer some joy to the users for the best possible deal. So let's break down both to determine which I think is better as of May 2022. And let's start with cloud gaming. If you've been around this channel in the last couple of years, you'll know that I am a cloud gaming enthusiast. I know that as of this moment in time, however, no singular cloud gaming service can replace my PlayStation 5. Heck, they can't replace my PlayStation 4 or even my PlayStation Vita, which still sees regular use. What they do achieve at this moment in time is a superb complementary service to my console and mobile gaming. They also offer an excellent gateway for people looking to get into or back into gaming. I can get AAA titles from some of the best developers on the planet on my phone. I can play those games wherever I have any form of internet connection, be that Ethernet, Wi-Fi or mobile data, as long as minimum speeds are achieved. I can use multiple input methods, either directly through the phone or with Bluetooth, or even wired accessories including keyboard and mouse. I can have 1080p 60fps visuals with most services, and some push to 4K with HDR and ray tracing. But there are, of course, challenges. That internet connection is a big one, especially after a global pandemic. Many people moved to remote working when the COVID pandemic started, and ISPs had to react to ensure that everyone still had internet access. That meant speed throttling during business hours. Even now, as the world has opened back up after that event, we still see broadband and mobile operators throttling speeds at peak times and throughout daylight hours so that people can still effectively work from home within a changed society. Depending on your package, this could mean that your speeds are simply too low to even access cloud gaming services, let alone use them effectively. Most cloud services also come with a required monthly subscription fee. GeForce Now, Shadow, Loudplay and xCloud are examples. While Stadia is free to access, you have to buy the games to be able to play or sign up to Stadia Pro to get monthly inclusive games, therefore reverting to a monthly subscription fee setup. GeForce Now makes you buy the games on a different platform before being able to play, as well as having to pay a monthly fee. With the increased cost of living that the world is facing in 2022, Subscription services and hobbies are one of the first items to be cancelled in cost-saving exercises to allow people to put food on the table, putting many cloud gaming services at risk. There has also been a lack of investment in many of these services too. While there are headline-grabbing moments like Bungie wanting to buy Stadia's tech, Google turning Stadia's tech into a B2B operation for increased rollout, and GeForce Now offering a 3080 experience remotely, the overall experience for the user is the same in 2022 as it was in 2019. In some cases, it has gotten drastically worse in the lifetime of the cloud gaming service. With stability issues, visuals that don't match promises and seriously laggy input across every cloud provider, 
it is a tough sell to get anyone to start stepping away from their traditional gaming machines to at least try cloud gaming when these issues persist multiple years after launch. So, they're reliant on internet speeds, they're expensive, they're unoptimized and rarely updated in meaningful ways. On the flip side, they're super accessible, far cheaper for one month of use than a single game purchase, way cheaper than a console or PC to get started and, for the most part, able to be in my pocket at all times. For me personally, the pros do outweigh the cons right now, but I can see why the cons would be too much for so many people. Cloud gaming is great. I'm an enthusiast and ambassador for it. I'll fight the corner of the cloud gaming services, but more importantly, the cloud gamers themselves, which means that I can see that it needs more focus if it is to grow and be the next true gaming platform. The other service, therefore, is Remote Play. I recently put out a video on this channel about turning your phone into a mobile PlayStation using Remote Play. It's gone down rather well and it's kind of where much of this conversation has stemmed from. So if you want to catch more content like that, a sub to the channel will make sure that you're kept up to date. My video was for PlayStation specifically, but they aren't the only ones to offer such an application. Remote Play allows you to access your existing hardware and games from wherever you are over an internet connection. There are versions available for PlayStation, Xbox and Steam at the time of writing, and these can be accessed on a multitude of devices from mobile phones to PCs with compatibility varying by provider. Remote Play grants a mostly full console or Steam experience on the go. There are certain device settings that can't be changed while using the application, and certain services that don't work, such as PlayStation Now on the PlayStation side of things. But overall, you get the full home gaming experience remotely. Because the service accesses your personal hardware, all of your owned games, save data, accounts, payment settings and so on are all ready to go with no additional input required from yourself. You can even use the inbuilt mic on a phone or tab to join voice parties and play with friends online. Unlike cloud gaming, remote play requires two internet connections to work. One on the device that you will be playing remotely on and one on the home device. This could either be very expensive or unreliable if using mobile data in a patchy signal area. Of course, if both connections are great, the experience will be great. For the console options, the consoles themselves can be left in rest mode and the remote play application will be able to turn the console on to connect to. For Steam Link, at least as far as I understand at the time of writing, the PC must already be on to connect. Remote Play has no cost for use, however it does require additional hardware in your possession like a console or PC to work. This can end up being quite cheap for say an original release PS4, or very expensive for a top of the line PC. If you are already in possession of this hardware however, Remote Play is a far cheaper and uh, oftentimes more sensible option than any cloud gaming service due to it being your hardware, games and saves being accessed. So. It's free to access, with all of your existing games and save data available, but it requires two internet connections if used to its full extent and requires additional hardware outside of the app to operate at all. I use Remote Play regularly for gaming and recording. It is a powerful and wonderful tool, but I only use it on the PlayStation side of things because I don't have the money to afford an Xbox and PC as well. It shows there are limitations, but also massive positives for the service. So which is better? As with many things, the true answer to this question is dependent upon the user. So your answer could be totally different to mine. Just make sure to let me know your thoughts on the matter in the comments section below. In terms of what I think, it's a very tough choice. I use both services. I've used Remote Play since 2014 and I've used Cloud Gaming since 2020. Both options have their apps on my phone and tablet at all times, though I'm not always subscribed to the cloud gaming options, thankfully a couple of those offer free to play options, meaning I don't always need to be subscribed. To go with a bit of a cop out answer though, both have their place. I mean, look at these videos here. Destiny 2, a free game running on PS5 natively, remote play from the PS5, remote play from the PS4 and from Stadia 
all doing the exact same activity. Which is which? Okay, PS4 only gets 30 frames per second, so that's a dead giveaway. But the others could all be the same system. The experience is the same in this game, wherever and however you play. Cloud, remote, or native, you are getting a solid Destiny game session. But as I mentioned earlier, no cloud gaming service can yet fully replace my PS5, and remote play needs my PS5 to operate at all. In reality, therefore, they are both supplementary services to my core console experience. If looked at in that regard, remote play is then the better option. All of my games and save data are always available when the internet is. Because not every game is like Destiny 2, where my save data is stored on the provider's side and I can easily pick up my progress on another system or service with no worries. Having that ability to access my existing saves is a huge positive for remote play above cloud gaming. By that same example though, I can't access exclusives to other platforms from PlayStation's remote play. Halo, Forza and Gears don't appear on PlayStation nor do Golf It, New World or CSGO, to name but a few that are available on cloud gaming platforms. In December 2021, I played Halo Infinite's campaign on my Samsung Galaxy tablet. That's a £70 game here in the UK if bought physically or digitally for Xbox platforms. But it was also included on xCloud for £10.99 per month. I finished the campaign within that billing month of that £10.99, so I got to experience everything the latest Halo had to offer, and more on the platform, for £10.99 over the course of a single month. While that is great value, I've barely touched xCloud since finishing that campaign, meaning a continued subscription is wasted money at that point, equating to the cost of a single game anyway. There is then the fact that many of the cloud services utterly suck in terms of resolution, stability and frame rate. While some boast 4K visuals, they are restricted to their top tier subscription service. Okay, that's only £8.99 a month for Stadia, which is one of the cheapest options. But that's £20 per month for GeForce Now's 3080 tier, which is prohibitively expensive at the best of times and only achieves 1440p, though it does claim 120 frames per second. For most of the time, most of the services top out at 1080p 60 frames per second, which is true for xCloud, Stadia's free option, GeForce Now Priority, PlayStation Now, though PS Now is super sampled to higher res through a console, and many more. Remote Play offers that same resolution and frame rate on a free application. All are beholden to the quality, speed and bandwidth of your internet connection, so mileage will vary drastically based on your internet infrastructure. Cloud gaming has an incredibly limited global rollout, with Stadia, xCloud, GeForce Now and PS Now collectively covering Japan, South Korea, Europe and North America, with a few outlying smaller countries getting limited support, whereas Remote Play is available in every market. I could go on with this back and forth, but we'll be here for quite some time if I do. Hopefully though, this has given you some idea of why it is so difficult to say which service is best. If I'm looking in the microcosm of my own life, the pros and cons are too close to call a definitive winner. I have access to every service mentioned, phenomenal broadband and mobile data coverage and speeds, a next generation console, and now and then the spare cash for a month or two of a cloud subscription. I'm lucky to be able to experience all of these services and all fill a different requirement for me from time to time. But if I take a more global view of this question, then the narrative shifts drastically. The big providers of cloud gaming offer their services in four definitive global regions. Now I say regions in that way because two that are mentioned are individual countries, not full global regions. Both Japan and South Korea would fall under the global region of Asia, meaning three global regions total have limited cloud gaming support. For the vast majority of worldwide users, therefore, there is only one option. One option that is dependent on a few factors, but one option that is available, works well, and offers a cloud gaming type experience for free. One option that is available on a multitude of devices across PlayStation, Xbox and the Steam platforms and will therefore globally be crowned as the better service. So there you have it. 
The answer to the question of which is better, cloud gaming or remote play? For most of the world, that answer is easily and quickly remote play. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this one about turning your phone into a mobile PlayStation console using remote play. Otherwise, your viewership is more than enough for me. Have yourselves a fantastic day, and until next time, take care.